Welcome back to part two of this series on AngularJS where we're building a quiz application. So if you haven't seen part one, head over there now and check that out. But in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create some properties on our controller and dynamically insert those into our HTML. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create properties on our controller and then insert those dynamically into our HTML. So there's two main ways of doing this and I'll demonstrate to you both of them and explain which one I prefer but you can use both or either or it doesn't matter. So the first way is probably the most common it seems to be the method that I've seen most used in these sort of tutorials which is using something called dollar sign scope and that's what's known as an angular service and angular has multiple of these services that you can inject into controllers that allow you to do some things some funky things so what dollar sign scope allows you to do is bind things onto it say for example dummy data and we'll set dummy data equal to hello world and now that this property dummy data is attached onto scope and then our view or the HTML has access to scope so now we can in here use our expression syntax and then we can just say dummy data and save the file come back into here and there we go hello world so what's happening here is we're attaching a variable or a property called dummy data onto scope setting it equal to something in this case hello world and then when we use this expression angular goes like oh this is an expression I need to evaluate and it sees dummy data and then it will look on scope and find oh there's dummy data and it'll print out whatever it is so hello world and it works but I tend not to use this method because I think it can make things a bit confusing in bigger applications. So for example, if you had this line of code, this double curly brace with dummy data, and you didn't know what controller you were inside of, maybe the controller is defined a hundred lines above and you're here. And you don't know where that dummy data is coming from. It's not immediately obvious. And as you may have guessed, I tend to like things to be immediately obvious. Maybe you've got four controllers and each of them has a property called dummy data. Where's the dummy data that you're currently looking at coming from? It's not obvious. And that's the problem with dollar sign scope, in my opinion. So the way that I like to do it is something called using controller as syntax. So right now we say ng controller equals list controller. But then we want to be able to reference the list controller explicitly in our expression. So to do that, we add in list controller as and then we give it an alias. So we say, in this case, list. So list controller as list. So now we can use the keyword list in this expression and say list dot dummy data. And this list will reference the list controller. It's just an alias for that list controller. So now it's explicitly saying, I want dummy data from list controller. So it's immediately obvious now. But the problem is, we come into here, or we save this file, and we come into here and there's nothing here we've broken our code and that's not good obviously that's because we're still using scope in the controller so to fix this we remove scope and remove scope from here as well and if you've ever used JavaScript constructors you'll be familiar with the keyword this and that just means the current context. And the current context right now is our list controller. So we're binding dummy data to our list controller. So now we have a variable on our list controller called dummy data equal to hello world. And then here we're saying list dot dummy data. And list, remember, is an alias for our list controller. So it's our list controller dot dummy data 
find me the dummy data property on the list controller and it will find it. So now if we save this file and we come back into our HTML, hello world, we fixed the code again. So you can use either of these ways of injecting your controller properties into the HTML. Both are totally fine but I prefer doing doing it this way and this is the way I'm going to continue to do it for the rest of this series but feel free to do it either way. So now that we've done that we can go on and create some of the actual markup for the application. So in the next video I'll introduce you to another directive called ng-repeat and we'll start building out the markup that will create the lists of turtles. So I'll see you then. For those of you that haven't checked out my website yet, I do a full article write-up for every single video that I put out on YouTube and that will include code snippets and other little things that will help you along. The link to the write-up for the current video is on the bottom left of the screen. And if you just want to continue watching this video series, then just click the link in the center of the screen and we'll get started with the next video.